Hello and welcome to the Ruler Peak podcast. My name is Ida and this is a podcast about knitting. I don't have a lot of time today so I thought I would just jump right in and show you what I've been working Well actually let's, let's start with some finished objects because I actually have two. Uh, which if you've been following me for a while is quite a lot for me. <laughs> And the first one is da -da 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 -da. quite hard to show actually here on the screen. This is the Flaum cardigan by Justina Lakowska. Um, and I have been knitting this out of the recommended yarn, the yarn used in the pattern, which is Quince and Co. Owl in the I think this is called the Tawny colorway. It's just a very beautiful, neutrally beigey brown color. It's very pretty. It's gonna go with everything, which is sort of the intention with the cardigan. I have not worn this. I've worn it once or twice maybe because it's it's just too hot right now, but it's gonna be perfect for fall. It has an open front, there's no buttons or anything. It has these um, pockets which really was what drew me to to the design of the pattern and then also it has a overall ripped texture so the the sleeves and the bo oh, uh, upper part of the body is just a regular um, one by one rib and then the um, sort of the lower part so from around here and down it's fisherman's rib which takes a lot of time. I was kind of cruising by on this thing until I reached a fisherman trip and then it just seemed like it took forever because you pick up in the stitch below so the fabric doesn't grow as much but or as quickly but it gets super squishy. I don't know if you can even tell the squish. Let me see. Oh, yeah. so nice and then in the end you do a regular one by one rib again at the bottom and you do a tubular bind off on both the bottom and the sleeves it's, it's just I had even though it took a lot of time um, well, I guess for me um, I'm a very slow knitter <laughs> so for me I guess it didn't take that long because it's thicker yarn uh, it's worth the weight as far as I remember um, yeah so I guess it didn't take as long but what I wanted to say was that I really really enjoyed knitting this it is like the pattern is like nothing I've ever knit before it's so you just have to trust the pattern because it doesn't make any sense I was like what is going on how is that ever going to turn into a cardigan and so I just closed my eyes, <laughs> I followed the pattern, and it was just magic. Um, you, you start by casting on for the, uh, the collar here. You knit for a certain amount of centimeters, and then you pick up in the other end, and, and you knit whatever, the same amount of, of centimeters. And then you pick up around here, and then you start doing the back of the sweater, and the back um, increases here. And then at one point, I can't, it's been a while, I can't even remember, but it's magic. If you want to try something that's different than your just regular cardigan style where you do reckless um, increases uh, or just like a yoked cardigan, definitely do this one. It's so much fun. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, the fit is... It's a little more, there's a little more vol volume that I wanted it to be. So, because of this uh, edging down here where you do one by one rib again after you do the fisherman's rib, it sort of draws the fab ring together and it makes this little sort of um, rounded shape. And I kind of think I just preferred it to be straight down. It's not that big of a deal though. I'm, I know I'm going to wear it a ton anyway. It's just, yeah. It's a perfect, perfect, perfect thing. I'm really, really happy with this. It's, it's just one of the thing. No, blah, 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 sorry. It's one of those things that I really need in my wardrobe. Um, 
so it's kind of nice to have that off my needles. I do want to knit another cardigan now. Uh, I do wear cardigans quite a lot, especially now that it's warmer in the weather or because I'm wearing dresses and things like that. I like to be able to take them uh, on and off depending on if I need more or less warmth. Uh, is there anything else that I want to say about this? a little bit of, I don't know, I think I use these for knowing when to do increases and decreases, something like that. I feel like there's more I need to say about this, but maybe there isn't. Yeah. Anyway, Flaum cardigan. It's from the Amerisu cardigan, uh, Amerisu magazine, but you can buy it. I, I just bought the pattern. It's released on its own now. Um, oh yeah, what I wanted to say is I w actually ran out of yarn, uh, but it was not a problem at all. I just blocked it and it was the perfect size. I don't know how many skeins I used because I've been using the yarn for something else that didn't turn out. Um, so when I decided to knit this, I was thinking, okay, it looks like I have enough yarn, but I didn't know because I didn't know exactly how many skeins I had. I guess I could have wa weighed the yarn. I don't know why I didn't do that. Anyways, it all worked out fine. I have like a tiny little bit of yarn left, which makes me happy. I don't like having a lot of um, just scrap yarns laying around, so that was nice too to sort of get all of that out of my stash. My next finished object is still a little wet because I blocked it yesterday. I added the elastic uh, in, the, in the waistband. I seemed um, full of this edge over and I washed it and I blocked it and it is these beautiful pants. So this is the um, lace pants or blonde boxer by Knitting for Olin uh, that I knit for Esther in my, I have a, well I don't really have much of it left but I had a God certified wool cotton blend and this is, this is it. They look I was knitting these and I kept thinking, okay, this is a size two years old, my daughter's two and a half. Um, I don't know if it's focusing. I was knitting this and I kept thinking, okay, they are going to be way too long for her because she's not that particularly tall uh, child. But they actually fit quite well. There's a little, quite a, I mean, a little bit of extra fabric on the, um, on the legs, but it's not a problem. They the lace pattern down at the bottom sort of uh, hugs the legs so she's not um, they're not too long in that sense and there's just more fabric up, up here but these just sort of hug the legs so she's not stepping on the bottom of the pants uh, I did make her try them on yesterday and she kept saying ow ow um, so I'm just really afraid and sort of scratching and things like that and it's not it's a wool cotton blend so I don't think it's scratchy at all, but I've never worn knitted pants, so maybe it's not very nice to have them on your legs. I don't know. I just can't bear if she's not, if she doesn't want to want to wear these because they actually took quite a lot of time. I started knitting one leg when I was in Edinburgh at the yarn festival, which took forever because I don't know what I was thinking. Lace knitting while you were talking with other people is not something I. And very good at apparently but the other leg was fairly fast actually um, yeah so I think if she's not doesn't want to wear them I'm probably gonna knit her another pair in another yarn because they look so cute on and they're just I don't know they're just really I like that they are oh sorry that's just the door I have all the windows open you can probably hear people working in the gardens outside but it's a very sort of hot and um, humid day to day anyway yeah I like that they're feminine but not too feminine I don't know if that makes sense no not too girly I guess if I, I knit these in a pink they would be very girly but yeah I, I wouldn't do that um, and they sort of this color just they makes it you know go with everything I guess it's sort of a theme, huh? 
Um, I dyed the yarn myself, but it's just the one of a kind thing that, yeah, I can't do that color again. So, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else to say. Yeah, except I would, I would definitely recommend the pattern. I don't know what I've been doing down here in the legs. They're not completely identical. It's nothing that you really notice at all when she's wearing them. It's not, it doesn't bother me at all. That was finished object number two. Then I have my Tanya. There's a story behind this Tanya because it's been a work. And not a labor of love, it's just been work. I knit this in a nylon Cardale blend. Yeah, 80% <laughs> Cardale and 20% nylon. And I knit it originally in the Popsicle colorway. I cast on the sweater and I knit almost all the lace until I... Oh, sorry, that's the door. It, it's closed now, so you won't hear any more noise from that. <laughs> anyway, I cast on the Tenya, I knit all the lace, I found out it was twisted, I had to rip the whole thing back, re-knit it, and then once I was done, I didn't really like the way the popsicle colorway looked on my skin, so I decided to dye it, and I dyed it blue. It turned out alright, I'll show you in a minute. It turned out alright. But, um, and then I needed to, I rinsed it up and I just, usually I just throw my knitting in the washing machine on gentle cycle and it's fine, but we got a new washing machine and it's not gentle enough for my knitwear. That's what I found out. So, it just, it didn't felt it completely at all. But it definitely felt it enough for it to be too small for me. And not really that... Oh, what's this? And not nice to wear because it's a little stiff. So... This Tanya that I really wanted to wear this summer is just not happening. Uh, I don't know. I guess I could give it to someone, but... Like I said, the fabric is not, it's just a little stiff because it went in the washing machine. And I also don't really like, I don't know if you can see, can you see there? I'm sorry. Do you, I'm, I know some of you get really seasick from this, I'm sorry, but I don't know, maybe you can't see. Well, there's a little bit of yellow there, it just, it used, it, it was yellow, but now it's more green, obviously, because of the blue that I over dyed it with and I just I'm not really that big of a fan of that it just looks dirty in a non cool way <laughs> so yeah just spent so much time on this thing I just spent so much time on this and yeah just not happy with it and uh, or well I, I guess I ruined it myself in the machine but so that's the end of my tenure I I may need another one because I really want one but it's gonna be a little while because it took me a long time to knit and yeah maybe for next year I can do do one maybe if I cast on this winter um, I really like the pattern I think it just looks I haven't found or haven't seen anyone on Instagram which is usually where I look at all knitwear. I don't really use Ravelry that much. I generally just search on hashtags on Instagram. And I feel like it just looks so pretty on all types of bodies. Oh, well, I forgot this one. I have another finished object. It's just because it's so small that I forgot about it. Da -da -da -da. I guess this was finished last time too. I just hadn't added the bottoms. Bottoms? Bottoms? Buttons. <laughs> Uh, at that point, well, but here we go. This is the uh, Little Boss, Little Brothers Romper, I think. It's the one where there's a Little Brothers Romper and then there's a Little Sisters Romper, and one of them is uh, with a 28 stitches gauge, and the other one is bigger, but I can't remember. This is the one with the 28 stitches gauge, 
and I knit this in my own color uh, oh, my own handout yarn this is the gold digger colorway and this is the newborn size I just knit this for as, to have as a sample um, I used all kinds of different buttons for it so well they're white but different shapes well I'm, I can't talk today they're not different shapes they're different sizes that's what I wanted to say yeah. so yeah I talked about this last time so I'm not really gonna talk anymore about it about it I just wanted to show you what it looked like with the buttons on put that down there works in progress I have two gonna start with the biggest one first which is the Soldatna Soldatna crop by Caitlin Hunter who is also the designer behind Tanya that I just showed you um, this is what it looks like it's a crop top so um, at the sleeves here there's just gonna be a ripped edge and I'm actually almost well I just started on the edging here I'm gonna do it in a row or two so it's a cropped um, short sleeved sweater to wear or I, I want to wear it up on top of dresses I have been trying with the idea of making it long sleeve just because I think I may get more wear out of it but if I were to do that I would want this color for the main part of the sleeve and I don't have any more of this I uh, have this much left so I don't think I'm gonna do that well I am not gonna do that because that's all I have left um, and this is the I forget the colorway name but this is a little lionhead knits I did a swap with her this December so we sort of made advent calendars for each other and I got this skein in one of the advent calendars and I can't remember the colorway Dolly Parton maybe um, and then the rest of the the yarn is my own hand dyed yarns. Uh, I think her color or her uh, or the little, little lion head knits. I think it's the superwash merino 100%. And this is just a merino sometimes we wash like my my own yarn. Uh, I use so I used um, so I think it's Dolly Parton. Like I said, the green is a. Uh, it's called eucalyptus the pink is avocado dyed and the yellow with a very green undertone is just the one of a kind and I obviously it's color work so that's what I knit <laughs> but I knit in color work and I tried a lot of different techniques I'm fairly new to color work I haven't done a lot of it so the top part I tried where I would knit each color per row so I would start out by knitting the uh, peachy color for the row of um, like a row of peach color and then I would just slip every time I got to uh, where the yellow was supposed to be, be I would slip the stitch and then when I came back I would then do the, do it the opposite way so I would slip all the peach stitches and then I would knit the yellow stitches and actually it worked out quite well as you can see it's a pretty even fabric that I got it just took forever so then I tried um, keeping the stitches I think this is where I would have both stitches on my left on my right needle on my right hand finger and it worked all right I guess it's not super even but it's okay then down here I would drop is this where I would drop? I think this is where I would I would knit with the strand of yarn and then I would drop the other color and then pick the other color up whenever I, I got to it. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> Down here is probably the worst part. This is where I had each strand of color in in one in each hand, which I'm I learned to knit with um as a thrower so I learned when I lived in the US and that's why you have your the, the yarn in your right hand and you throw it and then when I came back to Denmark I wanted to learn to kind of keep it in my left hand and do the continental style because it seemed like it was faster and it is but 
I just have very, very different tension. I don't know if you can see here. See how the, the green definitely pops out a lot more. So my tension in my right hand is a lot tighter than it is in my left hand. So it doesn't really work out that well. Anyway, I hope that a good blocking will help me out on this thing. Definitely just gonna block the crap out of it. <laughs> but this just, I mean, it's almost done, but it's on hold because we are going on. Oh, actually I wanted to show you something else. I wanted to show you the back that I am keeping this in because I am the organizer behind Fiber Folk which is a fiber festival here in Denmark. I'm doing it together with Jakob, who is my boyfriend. And we had our second um, fiber folk here in Roskilde in, in the spring in April. And we were lucky enough to have Calico, which is a German-based, uh, what's it called? She so, so um, project bags and other things out of her own naturally dyed fabric. And she does printing with um, plants on that fabric and I got this bag and it is the nicest bag that I own I'm actually have been using it just sort of to have other things than knitting in because it's just so nice let me show you here I just wanted to show you because it's so pretty I don't know what she dyed this with and the inside is just very I guess you can't see but it's just such, the finish is very nice. I feel like a lot of other project bags don't, they're nice, but let me show you the inside here. They often just have, like, they just sew the, the bottom part together and you have this thing sticking up. It's just not very nice. But this is just, I mean, look, there's just all the seams. I don't know, I don't sew. So um, I don't know what it's called, I guess it's called an invisible seam where you can't really see like the fabric is sort of tucked underneath neath the um super nice. I'm really happy with this bag. This is her logo. So oh, you can find her on Instagram, she's called Calico there as well. Really nice. Okay, anyway, that was the side node. I actually wanted to talk about fiber, fiber folk this episode. I don't think I'm gonna get to that really. Except I wanted to say it was a lovely event. If you came, thank you so much. If you shared about us on Instagram, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of things to say. It was a very hectic weekend. We did it for two days. Uh, yeah, we learn all the time. <laughs> and there's definitely things that we want to do different next time around. We do are doing sort of a pop up. Uh, Fiber folk in Aarhus in uh, on the 9th of November. So if you're a small maker, maker or if you just want to come and look at different beautiful fiber related stuff, then definitely come join us. Um, and then we're gonna do uh, another one on April. I think it's 18, 19, 19th of April next year here in Roskilde as well. Uh, we would love to have people from outside of Denmark join us so please if you are interested do contact me anyways side note so my soldatna crop is on hold because we are going to Spain Jakob and I and our daughter Esther and Freya who is Jakob's daughter and Jakob's mom we are going to Spain in, the, in three weeks time and Esther doesn't really have any clothes, like any summer clothes, or she doesn't have a lot. So I found a beautiful, that I've had in my stash for a long time, it's a 100% bamboo yarn from Pickles. Oh, okay, sorry, I'm just looking at the time on the screen. Um, Pickles, and it's just has such a, it's like a coppery color, it's very pretty. And then I cast on for the Tuya Bluse by Nordisk Strik. I have the book Omhu, which I've talked about several times. I've knit all, well I haven't knit, I've knit two of the three blouses in there. And then I had a very good friend knitting the Tuya Bluse, so I actually have all three blouses. And they are by far the ones that she and my daughter wears um, most of, of her knitwear. 
she wears the, she wears them a lot. Um, so anyway, I wanted to knit the two yabusa again. Do we have the? I don't have the book, otherwise I would have shown you. Um, so this is how far I am. I just cast it on. I'm doing a few modifications because the yarn is the gauge is bigger on the yarn. I think it's between 18 and 22 stitches, and the pattern, uh, the gauge in the pattern is 27 or 28 stitches for 10 centimeters. So what I've been doing is just I've cast on for the size six months old, and then I'm just knitting, doing the increases for the the arms uh, until I feel like it's big enough for her. Then I'm gonna sort of follow the pattern again. There's like a section where I do a lot of increases again, so it gets sort of an A-line shape. And then I want to do, I want to make it longer, so I want to make it to a sort of a dress for her. So I want it to be around knee knee length. So I'm, I think I'm just gonna continue until it's the right length. I don't know if I want to do more increases further down when I get further down, um, or maybe I should just do more increases at the that one part where you do increases on the body and then it sort of have a high low um, edging so it's lower on the back than the front I think it's gonna be very pretty I hope I can have this finished before we leave uh, I also have there's a lot of other things that I wanted to knit for her it's just not gonna happen I also want to sew for her I find I found a very uh, like a very pretty Instagram account where yeah. where they do knitting patterns for kids and they are very they look very simple so I'm actually thinking about maybe I should try it out buy a couple of the patterns quickly I just wanted to show you my new colorways because I just I'm really happy with them so let me show you real quick. Here is, this is called, I already forgot what it's called, I can't remember. Anyway, there's like a minty one. It's called Sea Mist. Sea Mist. <laughs> then I have Underwater Fairies. And then I have Berry Feast. And ballerina, it's just a very pale pink with tiny specks of pink in there. Uni uh, breakfast for unicorns. And, oops, just dropped that one. <laughs> Sunbeam. So these are, oh, I'll keep dropping them. These are new, very, I guess you could say very summer inspired colorways that I dyed. Um, I've been dyeing these last few weeks. My daughter started daycare, so I suddenly find myself with a lot more time than I usually have, or I'm not, uh, that I've been used to for the last two and a half years. I'm gonna bring these to a little event that I'm doing this Sunday. I've, I've been invited to come on a little cruise, a knitting cruise, and just briefly talk about my yarn and then people can buy the yarn if they want to. So these I'm going to bring along. If you are interested in the yarn, you can always email me and um, if I have the time, I'll be happy to custom dye yarns for you. Uh, yeah. And I think with that, I will say thank you so much for listening and watching. Mm. Do subscribe below if you like what I see, like what I see, like what you see. Um, that way you will also get not notifications when there's another episode uh, available. And it will help me sort of reach more people like me and you who like to knit and talk about yarn. And also feel free to comment, that's sort of the same thing. If I think when you get comments on YouTube, then you get more exposure. Sort of like Instagram, I think it's the same with Instagram. So, and do like 
if you do a thumbs up it's the same thing what I'm saying if, if you are sort of interacting with the video it's gonna help me mother me reach more people and I would be very thankful if you would help me to do that so um, and also I just like enjoy your comments so that's obviously another thing <laughs> Um, with that, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely, lovely summer. I hope to podcast soon again. Um, bye.